Good morning students. Today we will be discussing about respiratory system in humans. This is a very interesting chapter. We are going to know about our body. So and uh, therefore I request every one of you to pay utmost attention to the class. See we all are living organisms. We in the sense the plants, animals, microorganisms etc. We all require energy for performing different activities. Activities can be physical or metabolic. Say for example any movement in the body is a physical activity. Like your standing, sitting, bending, stretching. These all under, come under physical activities. Whereas there are some reactions that are happening inside your body. Like uh, say for example new products are being formed. Uh, bigger products are broken into smaller products. So all these chemical reactions come under metabolic activities. In order to perform all these activities we require energy. And from where does this energy come from? Energy comes from the food we eat. That's what you will see. Right. But just, just uh, remember digestive system lesson. There we discuss that the food we eat will be converted to different types of nutrients like carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals. Right. So food is not being converted to energy directly it is converted to simple nutrients which can be later uh, used as sources of energy right so digestion is not giving you energy it is giving you some of the nutrients which are sources of energy here carbohydrates and fats are sources of energy right so the in digestion process there is only release of uh, in digestion process, there is only breaking down of larger food molecules into simple nutrients. Among those nutrients, you will also have some nutrients which are sources of energy. Then ma'am, how energy is produced? Yes, energy is produced by a different process called respiration. Respiration is the process in which the, these nutrients are converted to energy. Along with energy, carbon dioxide and water are also released as byproducts. In order to convert these nutrients into energy, oxygen is required. This process of converting this food into energy in the presence of oxygen by releasing byproducts like carbon dioxide and water is called respiration. Right children? So what is respiration? Respiration is the process which yields or which produces energy in your body. The glucose or the food which is absorbed in every cell, it combines with oxygen and produces carbon dioxide, water and energy. This process is called respiration. Now in order to form energy we require oxygen. And how you get that oxygen? By breathing. So today we will discuss about this respiratory system chapter in detail with required animated videos. First of all we will discuss what are the different processes of respiration. The process of respiration is generally divided into two stages which is external respiration or breathing and then internal respiration or cellular respiration. To make you understand better, let me show you a small video. Breathing is the first step or first stage of respiration. This involves two steps called inhalation and exhalation. This happens in our respiratory organs. During inhalation, we take oxygen rich air into the lungs. During exhalation, we give out carbon dioxide rich outside the body from the lungs. 
This is a mechanical process where it happens due to the changes in the size of the lungs. Breathing is equal to 1 inhalation plus 1 exhalation. In this process, there is no involvement of chemical reactions or enzymes. One inhalation and one exhalation to Internal respiration is the second stage which is also called as cellular respiration as this is happening inside a cell. In case of internal or cellular respiration, mitochondria plays a major role and uh, in mitochondria, food or glucose will be converted to energy. Along with energy, carbon dioxide and water are released as byproducts. This process happens in the presence of oxygen. So, in case of internal or cellular respiration, glucose is converted to energy, carbon dioxide, water in the presence of oxygen. Further, if it is taking place in the absence of oxygen, it is a different type of respiration. So, by now, I hope everyone understood the differences between breathing and respiration. So, breathing is an internal, it is a, sorry, breathing is a mechanical process. It involves only in the increase and in decrease of the size of the lungs because of that physical changes only. Uh, inhalation and exhalation is taking place. That's why we are calling it as a mechanical process, okay. And it involves inhaling and exhaling of air and it will not involve any enzymes or any chemical reactions. Coming to respiration, it is happening inside every cell. It is a biochemical process. The chemical process that is happening inside a human body. Right? It, it involves several enzymes. It involves several reactions. Right? So, that's why respiration is a biochemical process and it's not a simple one. It is, it is involving several reactions. Okay? It is a complex one. And later we discussed that in breathing we take in oxygen, we release carbon dioxide outside. But in case of respiration, what happens? Oxygen which is taken inside is now on duty. What it is doing? It is oxidizing glucose into carbon dioxide, water and mainly energy. This energy is either stored in the cell or released in the form of ATP which is immediately used by the cell also. Okay, it is either used immediately or stored. Later, in case of breathing, what happens? We are talking only about the exchange with the external environment. Akada, no energy is released. And breathing takes place outside the cells. Okay, and respiration, internal respiration happens inside the cells. So, these are the differences between breathing and respiration. Now, we will talk about types of respiration. Types of respiration ante respiration eppadu okkala ne untunna ante no. Madam, we have millions of living organisms on the world as you said. Then do all they respire uh, in the same way ante no. There are different types of respirations. Say for example, if a respiration is happening in the presence of oxygen, we call such respiration as aerobic respiration. Aero means remember that air, oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, if the respiration is happening, we call it as aerobic respiration. And if it is happening in the absence of uh, oxygen, we call it anaerobic respiration. Okay, just think like aerobic and anaerobic are opposite words. Aerobic, presence of oxygen. Anaerobic, in the absence of, with the op absence of oxygen. Means oxygen is not required in this process. Or else whenever there is less oxygen, this process may happen. So, now in the coming video, I will show you, sorry, in the uh, video now following this, I will show you what are the major differences between aerobic and anaerobic uh, respirations and how many ATP molecules are formed, means which process is yielding more amount of energy and who performs aerobic respiration and who will perform anaerobic respiration right so after that we'll discuss about other 
uh, about uh, our famous scientist dr ella pregada subbarav garu okay now let's watch the video aerobic respiration is the first type of respiration see uh, it is not a single step as mentioned in textbook i'll show you how exactly aerobic respiration happens in the first step of aerobic respiration glucose is first broken it is not directly broken to energy it is broken into some substance called pyruvate by conversion of glucose into this pyruvate here two atp are released okay two energy packets are released now this pyruvate is again divided and it will undergo a complex chain of reactions and slowly it will release 36 atp along with carbon dioxide and water now this 36 atp and the first two atp total you will be having 38 atp right so 36 here and total first uh, first step two to total 38 atp will be released in aerobic respiration now in case of anaerobic respiration what happens here also glu glu uh, glucose is first broken into pyruvate and then what happens if there is shortage of oxygen in higher animals or in case of lower organisms like yeast and all they will not uh, convert pyruvate into energy directly they will instead produce lactic acid in higher animals like humans or in case of lower animals like yeast and other organisms ethyl alcohol is produced here also carbon dioxide will be a by product okay now during this only two atp are released so aerobic respiration is the highest energy yielding process in among the two now there is anaerobic respiration difference in human beings and lower organisms in case of lower organisms what happens ethyl alcohol is formed always along with ethyl alcohol you will also get carbon dioxide released along with two atp but in case of human beings what happens instead of ethyl alcohol lactic acid is produced so the energy released during aerobic respiration is almost 19 times more than the anaerobic respiration understood so by now i hope everyone understood uh, what are the different types of respiration first one is aerobic respiration generally it happens in all the higher animals uh, like the lion deer dog everyone and humans also here oxidation of food happens food means glucose is directly converted into energy carbon dioxide and water in the presence of oxygen okay uh, total matlab manam atp any yield avutunnayo chusukunte it is all 38 atp molecules you don't have to remember the uh, that pyruvate reactions everything for just for your general idea i'm telling you like it is not a simple process that's why i have shown you that picture uh, representations okay so total one glucose is giving you 38 atp molecules after a series of reactions in aerobic respiration right children adhe anaerobic respiration ante general ga manalo jarige anaerobic respiration veru bacteria fungus yeast wheat annitlo jarige anaerobic respiration veru మైక్రో ఆర్గానిజమ్స్లో జరిగే ఎనరోబిక్ రెస్పిరేషన్ని మనం ఫర్మెంటేషన్ అంటాం ఆ ఫర్మెంటేషన్ ప్రాసెస్లో ఇథైల్ ఆల్కోహాల్ అనేది రిలీజ్ అవుతుంది హ్యూమన్ బాడీలో జరిగే ఎనరోబిక్ రెస్పిరేషన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఫర్మెంటేషన్ ఓకే ఇన్ అవర్ బాడీ ఆల్సో వెన్ ఎవర్ దెర్ ఈస్ షార్టేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఆక్సిజన్ ఎనరోబిక్ రెస్పిరేషన్ హ్యాపెన్స్ దేర్ లాక్టిక్ యాసిడ్ ఈస్ రిలీజ్డ్ బట్ నాట్ ఇథైల్ ఆల్కోహాల్ okay uh, in lower organisms like yeast bacteria and all uh, when the vati respiration vidhanam anaerobic respiration anmadu chuttu oxygen unna they won't use it it happens in the absence of oxygen ekkad energy yield enta it is 2 atp only very less energy is released along with the ethyl alcohol they also release carbon dioxide 
that's why we will use yeast in preparation of cakes uh, those uh, idli or all this we will be using yeast bacteria and all to uh, uh, raise the dough why because they naturally they feed on the food and uh, uh, their respiration process dwara em avutundi a food anedi break ayi ethyl alcohol anedi release avutundi along with carbon dioxide and the can alcoholic preparations lo we will use microorganisms we will give them food we will make them respire so uh, we alcohol and carbon dioxide release chestu untai which we are using commercially that alcohol only we are selling commercially carbon dioxide release chese property name chestnam danto manam different different types of foods ane prepare chestnam like cakes breads and all such things understood but actually that is their natural respiration process avi energy vaatika avi energy produce cheskune process ni manam cash cheskuntunnam anamata understood children so anaerobic respiration in lower organisms is fermentation in a human bodies anaerobic respiration happens little differently we will give lactic acid as a by product now let's have a small look at the video how anaerobic respiration in human beings is happening so here he is mentioning about anaerobic respiration in humans during vigorous exercise ante vigorous exercise means a uh, strenuous exercise uh, a lot of work physical work whenever you are doing lot of physical work you become tired you start grasping for air so we'll see this in the following video uh, i'll show you how anaerobic respiration in humans happen generally in case of humans when we are performing any vigorous exercise means uh, any continuous exercise and you are working hard on it then what happens you get tired and what you will do you will suddenly stop and you will pant <laughs> like that so what what will happen that because your muscles will require more and more energy to do work okay in such conditions you require more oxygen to uh, break the glucose into energy so that's why you will be trying to take more breath <laughs> like that you will gasp for air understood so uh, in such conditions oxygen shortage will happen and we will the muscles will they will switch to anaerobic respiration in such conditions muscles will switch to anaerobic respiration then what happens anaerobic respiration will yield you very less energy it will give you only 2 atp and it will also produce a product called lactic acid this lactic acid is a type of product which accumulates ante undipothund anamata muscle lo it is not sent out so that is the reason you will your hand your muscle or where what work you are doing a muscles anevi pain avadam start avutai mer continuous ga running gaani jogging gaani chesina appudu suddenly you feel a sharp pain in your muscles that is what called as lactic acid build up appudu a lactic acid anedi em avutundante when you stop మీరు ఎక్సర్సైజ్ చేయడం ఆపిన తర్వాత ద లాక్టిక్ యాసిడ్ ఇన్ ద లివర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కన్వర్టెడ్ ఇన్ టు కార్బన్ డైఆక్సైడ్ అండ్ వాటర్ ఓకే సో లాక్టిక్ యాసిడ్ ఫ్రీ అయితే కానీ మీకు ఆ పెయిన్ తగ్గదు అనమాట అండర్స్టూడ్ సో దట్ ఈస్ వాట్ ఆక్సిజన్ డెత్ ఆక్సిజన్ డెఫిషియన్సీ వచ్చినప్పుడు అవర్ మజిల్స్ ఆటోమేటికలీ దే షిఫ్ట్ టు అనరోబిక్ రెస్పిరేషన్ there uh, why do we feel stiff at that time why pain will get because lactic acid is a product of anaerobic respiration and it accumulates there and it will be removed by the liver when you stop after doing vigorous exercise okay so i hope now everyone understood what is aerobic respiration and what is anaerobic respiration in the, and what is its differences in human beings and uh, lower animals right now we will also discuss about ella pregada subbarao garu who is an eminent indian biochemist he is in, in the biochemistry he is a great pioneer and uh, what he did he is the person who discovered atp as the energy molecule when did he do that he did it in 20th century that is in 1930 
apart from this he also uh, i uh, discovered the a method in order to synthesize synthesize folic acid which is also called as vitamin b9 ओके अं ड्यूरिंग ओल डेज वाट हापन एनीमिया अने चाल मंद एनीमिया अने वे एनीमिया इज वेरी लेस् क्वांटिटी आफ हेमोग्लोबि इफ इट इज देर इन युवर बाडी यू विल गेट एनीमिया ओके सो इन आर्डर टू फॉर्म हेमोग्लोबि यू आलो रिक्वयर फोली कैसेट फो फोली कैसेट फॉर्मेशन फो फोली कैसेट अने हेमोग्लोबि फॉर्मेशन की हेल्प सो पीपल वर् नाट हाविंग सफिशियंट फोली कैसेट अंड मोस्ट आफ द पीपल जनरली दे वर् एनीमि During that conditions, Ella Prakash Subbarao Garu, what he did, he in, uh, invented a method where in labs artificially they can prepare folic acid or vitamin B nine. So that was very good cure for anemia. Now also you have folate tablets whenever in your uh, whenever person is anemic. In such conditions, doctors will prescribe them, right? Uh, prescribe this uh, folic acid tablets, okay? Iron tablets, everything, so that the hemoglobin formation will be back to track, okay? And apart from discovering uh, this ATP molecule synthesis of vitamin uh, B nine, he also developed the, uh, an anti-cancer drug. Generally, cancer is was was not curable at a particular period. So later. different scientists uh, identified and discovered different techniques to overcome this problem now it is not a big problem it is just it is getting treated very nicely until and unless it is in the final stages right so ella prakada subbarao garu he also developed an anti cancer drug ante oka medicine ni discover chesaru anamata part uh, to cure and uh, to cure cancer so that is regarding aerobic and anaerobic respiration once we'll go through the differences between these two and in next class we'll discuss about the respiratory system okay so in what we learnt about aerobic and anaerobic we rec- we learnt that aerobic takes place in the presence of oxygen anaerobic in humans lo aithe shortage of oxygen ochina appudu anaerobic ki shift aipothayi muscles anevi okay muscles switch to anaerobic respiration during a shortage of oxygen adhe lower organisms lo aithe they do not they do not utilize oxygen during respiration example yeast bacteria and all the this type of respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen or in the shortage of oxygen now uh, in aerobic respiration directly what you are getting you are getting energy you are getting carbon dioxide you are getting water okay so you are getting water the air complete oxidation of food food anedi complete ga burn aipothundi ink em remnants levu uh, waste products em levu so carbon dioxide is sent out of the body through your lungs water is also sent out through sweat urine tears all such things so there is nothing remaining there so complete oxidation of food is happening but in anaerobic respiration it's not like that it is incomplete oxidation because you'll have products left like ethyl alcohol is left in case of lower organisms in case of humans lactic acid is left okay uh, so ఇన్కంప్లీట్ ఆక్సిడేషన్ అనేది జరుగుతుంది అనమాట ప్రోడక్ట్స్ అనేవి మిగిలిపోతాయి నెక్స్ట్ ఏటీపీ మాలిక్యూల్స్ వచ్చి థర్టీ ఎయిట్ ఆర్ రిలీజ్డ్ ఇన్ ఎరోబిక్ రెస్పిరేషన్ విచ్ ఇస్ నైన్టీన్ టైమ్స్ మోర్ దాన్ ద ఎనరోబిక్ ఎనరోబిక్లో ఓన్లీ టూ ఏటీపీ మాలిక్యూల్స్ అనేవి రిలీజ్ అవుతాయి ఫ్రమ్ వన్ గ్లూకోజ్ మాలిక్యూల్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఐమ్ టెలింగ్ ఫర్ ఓన్లీ వన్ గ్లూకోజ్ మాలిక్యూల్ వెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ బర్న్ ఎరోబిక్ గివ్స్ యూ థర్టీ ఎయిట్ ఏటీపీ వేర్ ఎస్ ఎనరోబిక్ గివ్స్ యూ టూ ఎయిటీపీ so end products we already discussed carbon dioxide water energy in aerobic carbon dioxide ethyl alcohol and energy in uh, lower organisms in anaerobic respiration adhe human bodies lo aithe uh, lactic acid and 2 atp okay later that will be converted by liver into normal carbon dioxide water and other products right children so this is regarding aerobic and anaerobic respiration so in this les- in this class we studied about what is respiration what are the different stages of respiration and what are the different types of respiration we also discussed what is the importance of digestion and respiration okay and we understood that respiration is a energy yielding process later we also discussed about how 
during vigorous exercise we will have lactic acid accumulation in our muscles and why it will get pain right why we will get pain later we also discussed about dr ella pragada subbarao garu and his eminent discoveries in the field of biochemistry so till here i hope everyone understood please go through the textbook and write your own running notes using this video and if you have any doubts please post a comment in the comment section okay i will get back to you immediately so in tomorrow's class we'll study about respiratory system and what are the parts and how respiration happens right thank you